Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, welcome to the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Freeze Pipe. Salute to our good friends at Freeze Pipe. They just launched a bunch of new products that are taking the cannabis market by storm for the smoothest and coldest way to smoke. You got to try a freezable pipe, bubbler, or bong from Freeze Pipe. Their newly released mini bong and tornado bong are priced very affordably and punch well above their weight class. And for those who prefer smoking joints, blunts, and vapes, Freeze Pipe's new glycerin blunt tip brings much needed icy glycerin coldness when smoking any kind of joint, blunt, or vape. So say goodbye to harsh smoking, coughing attacks by shopping for the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and dab rings at thefreezepipe.com and use code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com. Use code IDIOTS for 15% off. Shop today and start fighting fire with ice. Now let's get to the show. Uh, the Hezzy, Hezekiah Walker, he's not here this week. He's um he's on tour. He's on tour. He's, uh, where's he at, Taylor? In Europe, right? Could you talk to the microphone? See, one, see, you don't, you, how you forget how to do this already? <laughs> he's, uh, he's in Europe. Um, where do you got shows at this week? London. Um, uh, cause I know my, my homegirl Cuppy wanted to go and I feel like it was Dubai might've been last week. I don't know. I definitely know he's in London this week. So, you know, salute to Andrew. I really, and we, we say this every other podcast, but I really mean it, man. I don't think that people are truly understanding what the good brother, you know, Andrew Schultz, my good brother, Andrew Schultz is out here in these, in the world doing you know what I mean like he's selling out arenas all over the world we're not talking about you know theaters and all of that is great I love salute to everybody that you know sells out theaters and everything that is great but man when you can put 20,000 seats 20,000 asses in seats in arenas all over the fucking world come on man this is a kid from Manhattan you know who literally got it out the mud in every way shape and every way shape or form that you can think of in, in regard to comedy and he's selling out arenas all over the world. So salute to Schultz and uh, make sure y'all go check him out wherever he is in Europe. So I thought about what I wanted to do. Um, there's topics I want to talk about, right? But then I'm like, eh, it don't feel right talking, talking to y'all without Schultz about those topics. And the reason that it doesn't feel right is because I don't know if y'all know, but Brilliant Idiots is a big release for me. <laughs> Like, I like, do I, no, I don't like, I love doing Brilliant Idiots every week. And, you know, when we first started doing Brilliant Idiots like a decade ago, and, you know, my man Chris Moreau, I always got to salute Chris Moreau because Chris is the person who literally came to me over a decade ago and said that it's two things you got to do. He said, you got to do a book and you got to do a podcast. And I tell you all this story all the time. I was arrogant when it came to the podcast. I knew I always wanted to write a book because my mom is an English teacher and I love reading. And I always knew I wanted to write a book. I even knew what my book was going to be called years ago, even though it ended up not being called that. I wanted to call it I Don't Give a Fuck and Neither Should You, a self-help guide on how not to give a fuck. But, you know, uh, my book publisher, Salute to Simon and Shoes to Love Y'all to Death, they told me that um, a book like that so, would never sell. And it will, though. Well, I mean, ended up, you know, ended up the subtle art of not giving a fuck ended up coming out, you know, and that did, you know, pretty well. But they weren't wrong. I'm glad that, you know, I pivoted and I ended up naming my book, you know, Black Privilege. But those two things have absolutely changed my life. You know, books, book publishing, you know, I have an imprint at Simon & Schuster, Black Privilege Publishing, uh, Tamika Mallory, State of Emergency, How to Win in the Country We Built. That's out. Anita Kopak, Shallow Waters, that's out. Uh, Invisible Generals by my man Doug Melville. That'll be out um, November 7th, but you can pre-order it now. I got two New York Times bestselling books, uh, Black Privilege and Shook One, and I'm working on my third book. So the book industry absolutely changed my life. I'm, uh, and, and, and it's personal for me because I come from South Carolina, you know, a place where the first anti-literacy laws were created. Like you used to get you know, fined or jailed if you taught, you know, slaves to read. Now one of the descendants of those enslaved people, you know, has their own book print and I'm really in the book business in a real way. So it's not just business for me, it's personal. And when it comes to the podcast, I was arrogant, but I'm glad that I was like, you know what, let's do it. Why? Why was I arrogant? Because I was doing morning radio. So to me, that was the pinnacle at the time, you know, 10 years ago, well, thir well we know we've been doing Breakfast Club for 13 years, but I was already doing the pinnacle of what I thought the audio business could be. I was like, I'm doing radio at the highest level. I'm in New York City in the number one market. So when, you know, Chris came to me about doing a podcast, I'm like, for what? Even though I did enjoy listening to him at the time, Combat Jack, um, The Read. Read The Read was kind of fairly new, but I enjoyed listening to him. And I was like, yo, why not? It's just another way. It's just another platform you're creating, number one. And I can grab one of my friends who... I have great conversations with 
and kick it with them every week. And literally, that's what it's been for the last 10 years. So for Brilliant Idiots, idiots to become the brand that it's became and the business that it's became, at the end of the day, it's still me getting to come in here and kick it with one of my favorite people to talk to. It's not limited. It's not limited, you know? When you say not limited, what do you mean? Like, you guys are free to really talk. Mm. Yeah. FCC rules. And, yeah, and don't get me wrong. On Breakfast Club, we were able to talk freely as well. It's just that it's radio, so it's more time constraints. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can't really, you know, go deep, deep, deep on a lot of things. Even though I feel like, you know, with Breakfast Club, as far as... um you know, our, our interviews and stuff like that. We kind of created the template for what oh, you yeah. see now in in regards to podcast. But I'm saying all that to say, I don't like talking about a lot of the topics, you know, um, that I could be talking about this week without Schultz. Cause like I said, this is an outlet for me and it is um a place that I like to come and just kick it, kick it with my guy. So what I decided to do was just reach out, tell Taylor, let's just do asking idiots. Let's do asking idiots. Let's talk to the people. You know what I mean? Let's, let's see what the people uh, are talking about. So read them, Taylor. What we got? Okay. How you give I me all these papers, but you ain't got nothing, but you read off your phone. I have digital. <laughs> oh. I, have, I try to help you out. Okay. Let's do it. Let's, let, let's try to go through all of these. All right. Start so, from the top. First one is by Lexus for under, dot underscore. Okay. If you could trade any body part with any human on earth, what would it be? Why you sound smarter? Excuse me? Like you sound smarter without shows here. Why is that? <laughs> Because y'all be y'all be fucking with me. Y'all out there listening. Y'all y'all like who is that talking? <laughs> is, that, is that Taylor? That can't be Taylor talking, is it? Okay, if you could trade any body part with any human on Wait. earth, huh? You say I sound stupid <laughs> anywhere else. I ain't say that. <laughs> I ain't say that. I ain't say that. I ain't say that. Okay, smart. Uh, no, I ain't say that. Okay, go ahead. If you could trade any body part with any human human on earth, what would it be? Think about what you admire. Wait. No, I know what it would be. I would, I would, I would. No, now how long is the trade? I don't know. Why do we, why do we do that with these questions? Just keep it as it is. Because I don't want it to be a permanent <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? But if I could trade any body part with any human on earth, it would be the vagina. I think that if what? men, I'm going to tell you why. I think that if <laughs> men traded their penises for vaginas for, let's just say, 30 days, I think they'd have a more appreciation for the vagina. I really do. I think they would appreciate it more. I think they would understand what women go through, especially because what comes the with the vagina, cycle, the yeah. menstrual cycle and everything else. I think people would, especially men, we would appreciate uh, the vagina more if we had one for 30. Got it! <laughs> I'm very surprised you said that. Why? I thought you were going to say something about like more chestnuts. I already got that. <laughs> I don't have to trade anything with Morris Chestnut. Me and Morris Chestnut came off the same assembly line. We came out of the same factory <laughs> when God had Mar. I don't know who came. Well, clearly Morris came first because he's older. So God made the Morris model. And then after the Morris model, he made me the Charlemagne. And that's, I, I got that already. So I don't need to trade nothing with Morris. If you could, what would you do, Tim? If I could trade parts of the human? Mm -hmm. uh, I would want to have... Uh, I'm pretty okay with my body type and everything. So, but I guess kind of a little vice versa. I kind of always wanted to, wanted to know what it felt like to have a dick. <laughs> Why? Because how y'all, like, I just want to know what the pussy feels like. Honestly, I just want to know what the pussy feels like. Oh, so you want to like. some pussy? Yeah. And I get what you're saying. I want to know what it feels like to y'all. So what's the, I mean, you done had pussy before though. N stop. No, I haven't. No, <laughs> yes, I haven't. Have. No, I haven't. She just ate me out. That's it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Your mama listens to this podcast, Taylor. <laughs> Give me another. What's the next one? Um, Taveras310 underscore. What kind of music have you been listening to lately? Don't got to be no new bumping one. But I already know which one you're going to say. What kind of music have I been <laughs> listening to lately? Um... Sexy red. That goddamn, I mean, listen, I hate to tell y'all this, you know what I mean? Because y'all think that I'm a Drake hater, you know what I mean? But I really like that goddamn Rich Baby Daddy record with Drake, Sexy Red, and motherfucking SZA. You know what I mean? I've been playing that a lot, you know? But uh, right now, um, it's a couple of, it's a couple of albums. I'm, uh, Offset's album, Set It Off, I think is great. I don't think people are talking about it enough. I know he did like 65,000 records his first week. I think that we're not used to seeing the Migos by themselves yet. I know. 
And I think it was like this before Takeoff passed away. God bless the dead. I think before Takeoff passed away, even when... People they, were on Quavo and Takeoff's album. Right. I think I think people were looking at Quavo to be like the breakout star. Like, you know, it's always yeah, like do. that in a group. Yeah. Like, every, anytime you see a group, whether it's Destiny Child, NSYNC, whoever it is, everybody's always looking for that person who can break out and be the star. Yeah. I don't know if... um. I don't know if the Migos ever had a, a a person that everybody thought without a shadow of a doubt would be a breakout solo star. I think that we knew all of them had po- potential to be, you know, breakout solo stars, but it's not like, you know, I think you could see, it's not like it was everybody was so head and shoulders above each other, you know? Weren't, but I think people focus more on Quavo just because I think Quavo had more features with a lot more artists. I think that's what it was. I think there was a period of time where people just gravitated towards Quavo. I don't know what that... I mean, I like Quavo a lot. I don't know what it was. I don't know if Offset was in jail or... Because right. Takeoff has always been the best one lyrically. But see, that's what I like about Offset's new album. Offset stepped it up in every single way. He stepped it up in his production. He stepped it up with his lyrics. And Offset also he said... personality. You see more of his personality, him doing all those interviews. By the way... Offset was on Breakfast Club. Offset said two things that I want all y'all motherfuckers to remember. He said, number one, you can't forget the importance of radio. He said that. And if you look, Offset did a lot of different radio runs. He was at a lot of different radio stations, sitting down with a lot of different radio personalities. And he was stepping out there and doing, you know, podcasts that you wouldn't necessarily see him on. Like the Bobby, what's her name? Bobby. Altoff. Yeah, Bobby Altoff. I seen her. She, he's doing a Call Her Daddy, stuff like that. Oh, but yeah. he, But he also said in the interview that, he got an A&R. So I don't know if y'all know what A&R is, but that's an artist in repertoire. That's a person who helps you develop your sound. You know, that's a person that will help you pick beats. That's a person that'll go out there and say, hey, man, you should try to do this. That's a person that'll go out there and get features, tell you what songs you might should write about, like just help you with the direction of your album in a real way. And I think I think that's something that's been really lost. But if you listen to his album, you know, it it, it reflects. You can hear it and be like, damn, like, Offset really put out a great album. And Father of Four was a great album, too. So I just think the biggest uh, the biggest thing with the Migos is that we're just not used to seeing them solo. Because even when they put out that series of uh, solo albums, when it was Quavo, Take Off, Offset, they all put out their albums, you still kind of looked at them as the Migos. Right. And they came back, and I think they did Culture 3 after all of that. So you definitely... Still looked at them as the Migos. Oh, yeah, they did do that. Yeah, yeah. You they know? try to trick people, think they would break up. And that's and that's an interesting thing. I was just talking to somebody about that, man. You know, sometimes you know you you cannot grow or evolve because of the situation that you may not you may be. I don't want to say stuck in, but you've gotten comfortable in. Yeah. If you can always go back to the group dynamic, you know it's hard to like break out and really spread your wings. I think another reason Offset's album sounds so good because they know that there's no group to go back to, you know, sadly, like Takeoff is no longer here. So there's no group to go back to. So him, Quavo, they really, really do got to carve their own lanes out, you yeah. know, as, as individuals. So um, salute, to, salute to Offset. I'm bumping that. I'm also listening to... Uh, Summer Walker's album. What's Summer Walk album? You liked her album. You kept playing it. Oh, the soft girl. I mean, I, I'm I'm still in my soft girl era. I didn't stick with I didn't stick with that Summer Walker album the way that I should have though. But I I did like the album a lot. I didn't like, I didn't I didn't stay with it. I didn't live with it. Like I'm still living with Michael from Killer Mike. I still think that's the rap album of the year. Um, I think Offset's up there for rap album of the year. If I had to pick my top three rap albums of the year right now, it would be Killer Mike, Michael, Offset, Set It Off, and uh, Nick Grant Sunday Dinner. Those would be my three uh, albums of the year right now. Like Nick Grant's Sunday Dinner is very phenomenal. And I love the fact that Nick Grant is fully embracing South Carolina. He's fully embracing the 843, fully embracing Walter Burrow. And he's dope. So that's that's what I'm really listening to. Other than that, you're going to catch me listening to 90s R&B and early 2000s crunk music because I miss both of those eras. <laughs> I think Little John is a motherfucking god. I think Little John is a god and he should always be respected as such. OK, I think that we don't, you know, give enough credit to people who gave us actual whole genres of music. Little John is the architect behind a genre yeah. of music. And that genre of music is called crunk. So salute to Lil John. Lil John needs to put out a book 
or we need a Lil John documentary. Like, like people need to like really like Lil John needs to really be celebrated. Remember when Salam Remy was here in the Breakfast Club studio? Because I'm, I'm recording from Breakfast Club studio right now. He was here in Breakfast Club studio and he had like Slick Rick on a painting. Like that's what Lil John yeah. needs. Because we really don't be appreciating, you know, our, 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 our pioneers in hip hop. These people who have contributed such great things to the culture. We really don't be appreciating them the way that we should. And I think that we look at our music and our art and our culture as something that's disposable when actually it really, truly is art. I don't think they look at it as disposable. I feel like it's just with the times, everything is so fast. Everything, yeah. I, yeah, everything's fast paced. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right with that. I, I be wondering like that with, with, with y'all generation when it comes to like music because. All we're doing is copying off of y'all though. No, you're we not. just changing. Yeah, we are. We're using, I'm saying we're using the same instrumentals and just re- remixing it, revamping it. I don't know what you're talking about. I take back what I said about your earlier sign of smarter. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Um, <laughs> yes, you do. Explain, explain, explain a little bit more. Oh, uh, yeah. Open the door. Oh, my gosh. What? Nothing. I just want to know what, what you're doing. <laughs> what? what you doing and on? I'm doing a podcast. They asked me a question. They said, uh, what is the toughest part about you being married? And how do you get through it? <laughs> oh, no. They asked you that? No, I'm doing asking. I'm doing a segment called Asking Idiots. This is just a last who just walked in. I'm doing uh, a segment called Asking Idiots. Actually, I was talking about what kind of music I've been listening to lately. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, you, oh, Nick Grant. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. See? Brother. How you know that? Sunday dinner, because I listen to it with you. <laughs> you want to talk? All right, what you want me to say? Yeah, go sit. Get, 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 get just a chair. Oh, you want to get? Oh, you can sit right there. Yeah, sit right here. How long else? I don't know. I'm just asking questions. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Hey. I'm gonna ask the question. Okay. But that, but that. Long story short, that's what I'm listening to. Offset, Killer Mike, and uh, Nick Grant. And Lil John needs a statue. Pop. Turn your t- goddamn mic up, Taylor. Somebody yeah. out there saying, no, Taylor, keep it down. But turn it up. <laughs> don't do Taylor that. Taylor producing. <laughs> don't don't Taylor, do that. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor is producing right uh-huh. now. All right. Okay. What's the, okay, what's the next question? Um, do you listen to Disney? You no. You watch Disney? No? I have a son. Yeah. Why you don't ask the, the third question? Okay, fine. Okay. We, gonna, we can do them in order. I might know some things. Go ahead, Sue. Well, it was just it was a silly question. So mm-hmm. by Sol Rock, uh, I don't know how to say his name. What is the toughest? Let me say. <laughs> what is that? If, can like neither really one of y'all pronounce it? Oh, Sol Rack. <laughs> oh, okay, that's his <laughs> name. <laughs> Sol Rack. <laughs> what is the toughest part about being married and how to how to get through it? Oh my gosh. Oh, well, go ahead. Go ahead, you married <laughs> now. Go ahead, you married now. Girl, I took a deep breath. Like, I was ready to be like, oh, my Y'all God, know, the just, hardest just, thing. Just came out, her and Brittany Grinder married. They, <laughs> First they, of all, no, couple. I did not come out yet. I ain't never signed <laughs> No, for real, no. The little Brit, Brit, Brit could have got it, but she ain't wanted it. She was over there in Russia, so I was like, I'm going to leave you alone. But it's <laughs> you all right. You talked to that Brit before? No, I would have, but no, I'm not even gay like that no more right now. So, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> so you got with your new boo because he looked like no, Britney Griner for real. Stop. No, that is not. He just fell into my life. I didn't know. Britney was when when she first went over to Russia or whatever. She was cute. I was like, uh, uh-uh. and then she came back. She got a haircut. I was like, uh, uh-uh. yeah, it's even cuter. But she married. I don't deal with married people. How did he? How did he <laughs> just fall into your life, Jess? He fell into my life. I, all right, so I walked into this bar one day, and are you it, telling the truth? No. All right. I, I met him. I met him back in February 23rd. Actually, I was actually doing, that's the day I met Stephanie Mills at Breakfast Club, February oh. 23rd. That's when I, I met him. I went down to Baltimore and it was NCAA weekend or something like that. Oh, no. CIAA. C-I-A-A yeah. That's your birthday C-I-A-A weekend. CIAA weekend. Yeah. My birthday is February 13th, okay. but my party was February 26th. That's the party that you and me didn't come to. Y'all said y'all was. <laughs> Um, but I was stuck there with Wallow. That was it. Um, <laughs> Salute to Wallow. Wallow so, great. <laughs> still, yeah, Wallow is great. Not at a party. Sure. So um, I met him at this restaurant. Now, he he's a driver, a truck driver. So he was on, on a break. And I was like, oh, okay. What are the odds that I meet you? I've never met like a Mexican truck driver who was really, really tall. I was like, what? He's fully <laughs> Mexican? Yeah, yes. No, no, no. He's not fully Mexican. He's Mexican say, and he African-American. Okay. Yes. His dad is African-American and uh, actually Indian, uh, Native American. And then his mom is Mexican. Okay. And there's some other stuff in there going on too. I don't I don't think she know all of what she is, but I was like, mm, she got like a little bit of Indian too in her, but I just don't think she see it. 
But yeah, it's he's Mexican, Native American, and black. You gotta make very much African American. Yes. You still ain't say how you met him. He just walked in the bar. You just he, yeah, yo. What did he say to you? All right, so he didn't say nothing to me. I started. I asked him. Oh, did him. yeah, I I liked him. I was like, but he had a cousin who was trying to get with me at first, and then I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. And then me when, over here. When he walked. <laughs> <laughs> the first of all, the cousin was black, so ain't no me over nobody. Shut up, y'all. He did not, and that was a horrible Mexican accent. But <laughs> yes, the cousin was trying to get with me or whatever. But he was the cousin's from Baltimore, born and raised, and he talked just like me. I'm like, oh no, I can't deal with nobody that talk just like me. What you? So, why? Yeah, you, yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Why? Wait, no, no why? But, no, you single because, me too. Yeah, like both of us walking in the bar talking like that. No, they gonna be like, oh hell no, Jess. <laughs> no, and then that then for my future kids, what we gonna do? <laughs> no, we can't. So now, what you was drinking? Um, Casamigos. Give me two Casamigos. Yeah, and he was like, "No, nah, I don't drink." I was like, oh, "You don't drink." Man. He was like, "No, nah, I drink wine." I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna buy you no wine." He was like, "I don't want you to buy me anything." And I was like, "Okay, but I want you to have a drink with me." He was like, "I don't drink." I said, "Oh, okay. All right. So why are you at the bar?" He was like, "Cause I can get something to eat too." I said, "No, why are you at the bar?" He said, "Cause I'm grown." I was like, okay, I like a little, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, okay. So, <laughs> so I still bought him a shot and shit. And he, they sat it over there. And he was just like, mm-mm, you can give it to her. And I was like, oh, he really ain't trying to take my drink or whatever. So he go to the other nigga, I take it. Like, nigga, no, I don't want you to take it. So he um he ended up telling me, I really don't drink. I'm, I'm not even trying to be disrespectful, but I'll, I'll pay for the round that you just bought or whatever because I don't, I don't drink. So he paid, he paid for it. And then I was flirting with him a little bit longer. And then he just was like, he started laughing. That was the first, that, that boy was sitting there with me. That man was sitting there with me for like 30 minutes and didn't laugh. I was like, oh, hell no. Hold on. But I was like, oh, it could be just the Mexican. Like, cause you know they probably don't understand. Well, your jokes you know, wasn't I was hitting, sitting, you didn't yeah, I was like, oh, cause I ain't ever. Your jokes too black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was like, nah, he Mexican. He don't understand what's going on. Did he know who you were? Yeah, what, please? So, yeah, he knew who I was, but it was like, okay, I don't know if she planned, and then I don't, I don't know about her. I can't date no comedian. But first date, nigga, never left for you. So, so y'all married now? <laughs> no, we not yet. Yet? Yeah, not yet. You want to marry him? I did. Oh, oh shit! I do. I do. I do. <laughs> will you marry me? I do. I'm gonna just I say do. I will. I'm gonna say I, I will. I will. Like, I can't. <laughs> I do. You. I I'm do not gonna you. say I do. I'm gonna say I will. <laughs> All right. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. There's the tough part about being married. Come uh, on. Uh, stop. Well, listen. What I think. Um, now I've never been married, but I grew up in a, a, a two parent home. They were mm-hmm. married. Yo, you got to communicate. Even have the uncomfortable conversations. You got to be able yeah. to do that. Like, why? Because everybody look at even with kids a marriage kids. from the even with what kids. Though. I'm oh, saying like girl. Get like, the hell out of me. Okay, all right. <laughs> girl, did you say even with cancer patients? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Jason, no girl on it. It's like, girl, what? <laughs> That's why I thought you said, I was going to say, what the hell are we talking about here? All right. <laughs> well, y'all trying to get me caught up. Um, no, you have to communicate because one thing that my mom and my dad did not do is communicate. They they like, they, if my mom had an issue with something, my dad did, Shane tell him. My dad had an issue with something my mom wasn't doing or, or was doing. She didn't tell him. I mean, he didn't tell her. So what you do is you find comfort other places and because it's uncomfortable to tell you to what to tell your wife. You ain't doing this. Mm-hmm. You ain't doing it for me. You ain't like we had somebody recently call up. Just fix my mess. Breakfast club. And he was saying, yo, my wife held me down seven years. Been with her for 24 years. Mm-hmm. But. She's not attractive to me anymore. What should I do? Tell her. Tell her. And y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all, yeah, it's not about what we want to hear. Yeah. So you're going to risk her killing you. You rather go cheat. Because you said your wife is in the streets. If she if she finds out I cheat on her, I'm going to kill her. She's going to kill me. So I, I don't want to cheat. I, I mean, I can't cheat. And he said he wants to. He said he can't. So the thing is, you just tell her. Tell her. Like, Wait, what's the, what's the outcome? It? Yeah. She knows. It it. From then, from then on, she knows. Just right, because at the end of the day, it's all like she's absolutely right. It's all about communication. And when I say, what's the, when you say, what's the toughest part about being married? And I say, man, I don't think it is no real tough part about being married. That is mm-hmm. the toughest part: communication. Yeah. Either you're gonna 
be not communicating mm-hmm. or you might communicate a little too a much, little too much. but you got to be willing to deal with that because yeah. if that person loves you and that person, like me and my wife been together 25 years. So that's mm-hmm. my, that's my people. That's like, like they, there's yep. nothing me and her can't talk about. Like yeah. that's when, that's when it's actually an issue. And I feel like we're not communicating, but yeah. we don't ever have that problem. Right. And you the, know her and she know you to the right. point where if she walking around and something is wrong, you'll know to call Absolutely. that out. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a lot of that going on in marriages. It's like my wife walking around, she acting all crazy. It's right. like, damn, you're not even trying to see why. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it, oh, well, I can't read mine. She got to tell me why. Sometimes guys turn a blind eye. She she feel like she can't talk to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and then vice versa too. Like I, a man could be unhappy and the woman, I don't know what to do. All right, he keep acting like that. I'm going to just keep going out with my girls. Nah, you're not even trying to make it safe enough as an environment for her for him to come to mm-hmm. you you know men men get the worst end of that in my opinion yeah. women we always wear how we feel right here we 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 talk about it sometimes we over talk about it y'all men, be lying though yeah it was a lot of times we do lying about what everything what the problem is exactly y'all want to be strong be li- yeah black women know? just handle it on your own yep. like you know i want to know what's going on what's the problem and i see that in y'all early like my 15 yeah. year old like that now what's the price you don't want to tell me what's wrong yeah like, you yeah, ain't got to walk through nothing alone she's 15 though mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no nah, that's that's true that's definitely true um i just think as women now not even like i because i can't speak for back then but like now I feel like women have this chip on their shoulder. Like I can do, I can, but that's I can what I do whatever. Y'all with still kids, can do. But that's what I'm saying with kids, though. Like so, Charlamagne, when you guys had a kid, that didn't make it harder. Harder to what? Be married? Just be married, or just no? It actually made it actually made it stronger because that's the other thing I was going to say too. You know, when you're looking at your significant other, mm-hmm. it's levels, right? Because mm-hmm. sometimes we don't recognize the growth in people. Yeah. The reason I love my my wife the way that I do is because we literally grew up together as kids. So I've seen, she's yeah. seen a bunch of phases of me. I've seen a bunch of phases of her. Her being a mother made me grow to love her even more. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Because I'm watching her be this amazing Nurture mother. To a child That's that right. belongs to you too. That's so right. you helped her create this human being. That's you, right. You know, so now you're making your own people and it's nothing like being with the person who helped you make these people and watching them do that. Of course, but I remember when Michelle Obama, she was saying, like, she didn't like um, her husband for how many many years because they're, like, battling who takes care of the kid more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. It's not hard. She said that? Yeah. That don't sound like something Michelle would say. Taylor, yeah, are you serious? She, I, said, <laughs> she said. She said. She said that know. it was. It's only, it was like co- it was a competition. A competition mm. of what? Like, ain't no competition between fathers and moms. Mm-hmm. Fathers play a role. Moms play a role. Kids gonna yeah. always gravitate towards the mom a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Dad is there for a reason. Like my, I got two, d- definitely got two daddy's girls in the house. Yeah, but they still <laughs> love mama. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I can never give them what. My wife gives them, and right. my wife can never give them what I give them. Right. But I think whatever the mom gives them is stronger. Yeah. Like, you know how much of a piece of shit you got to be if your mama don't like you? Yeah. Your yeah. mama will love you to the end of time. Your mama mm-hmm. will be in the courtroom after you done killed 20 people. Mm-hmm. Talk about, that's my baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Daddy'll be like, man, fuck that nigga, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, fuck that murderous ass nigga. That ain't yeah. mine. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you know You're right. So, You're right. So it's just something mama has that, you know, daddy can't compete with, and you shouldn't try. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's just like Blueface mother. What would she say? She said, my son will never shoot you in the foot. He'll shoot you in your ass, but he ain't going to shoot you in your foot. And I stand by that. Well, I'd rather be shot in my foot than my ass. Yes. Um, So, yeah. You love Blueface mama. I know. No, I I don't. (laughs) You really do. I don't. Just got a stable of mama she loved. Blueface mama, Tokyo (laughs) Tony. I do love Tokyo Tony. I do not love Carlisa. That's her name. They Carlisa. all be in your DMs, though. I think they be looking yeah. at you like a little daughter figure. Yeah, I, I guess. Why I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then all, I don't know. Because all their kids was fucked up once. Right. And I was like, why I got to be the... You know what I'm saying? Because Tokyo... Tokyo do like me. Yeah. And then... I, but I, I do like Angela. I mean, I like Ooh, Black Angela. China. And Black China. She, ain't want, she don't want to be Black China no more. Oh. She's Angela White. So that's who she is now. Um, And then Mama D... She like me. Oh, Even so Jim Jones' did. mother. Like, I, yeah, so you, I got a thing with the moms. <laughs> and that's crazy. 
<laughs> and that's what they probably be telling things. him. Why you don't date that Jess girl? Yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm, <laughs> right? mm-mm, why you know mm-mm, little Jess? You know mm-mm, little funny mm-mm, Jess that be on Instagram? Mm-mm. You know little Tutu. Yeah, hey yo, not little Tutu. <laughs> hey yo, I'm done. I, mm-mm, I can't. Ready? I'd be the wrong one. I'd be the wrong one. I don't care. Blue face would go crazy. Ain't no way. And they, you think you're going crazy behind Krishan? Man, shout out. Salute to Blueface. He done Ain't turned no, out a Baltimore girl him, before. Please. Blue. Blue. Ain't blue no done turned out a Baltimore girl before. Yeah, he, they, Y'all yeah. light work the blue. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> Krishan light work the blue. <laughs> <laughs> Krishan is light work. That, yeah, he caught her young. So I don't know. He caught her right out, right out of the, what, the Ninja Wars. It was Ninja Warriors. Because that's Ninja what Warriors. she was doing. She was doing <laughs> athletic shit. She was doing Ninja Warriors before Krishan? she... Krishan? Yeah, before she lost that Oh, yeah, too. she was. She was a crazy athlete. Crazy Krishan athlete. Krishan was on Ninja Warriors? Yes, yes. Ninja Warriors. You know and she, she, video? she even talked... No. No. Yo, she She's even like, talked different. She was like, yeah, hi, she, I'm Krishan. Right. Like that type. <laughs> like, no, I swear, no, yo, it no, wasn't... No, bro. I swear, yo, she wasn't like... She wasn't like this. Yeah. Like, well, she wasn't like that. Somebody told me she was an athlete in school, though. She was. She ran track. She did football. She did Everything. She was in the same school as Nyla. She swim like a fish. She did everything. Damn. And then she met, yo, she went, my bad, she met Zeus. <laughs> and then, <laughs> let's, so, do, let's do this next one and do some commercials, Taylor. What's the next okay. one? All right. Oh, yeah, you got commercials? Yeah, we got commercials. I know, that's right. Um, Andrew PW83 wants to know, are you still a Pinkett Smith nose, nose freak, Winfrey Carter? Ooh. Say it again. Please read over it. We're going to edit that out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you still, well, it goes ne- necessarily to She said, I, I get it. She said, because, you know, I always say my last name is Charlemagne Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter. Oh, yeah, I say they said it wrong. got going on. They said it wrong? That, no, how he put it in order. Uh, how yeah, do you I'm say a, the order? Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles yeah. Carter. Mm. Yeah, I'm still a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter. Okay. Why wouldn't I be? Here's the thing. Jada is just telling her truth. Yeah. And I cannot be mad at Jada for telling her yeah. truth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. she wrote a book. Like, it's a memoir. That's what you should do in a memoir. Yeah. I prefer Jada writing a book, a whole memoir, which I bought yesterday, Amazon Prime sent it yesterday. I'd rather her doing that than just be all over Instagram spilling her guts in long-ass captions or be on somebody's yeah. podcast, unless it was ours, spilling her guts, you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah, unless it was ours. You know what I mean? For yeah. real, I, 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 like, other, like, I don't have, write it in a book. That's when you're supposed to give up yeah, Those all these secrets gems. and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Will no, Smith's right. memoir, he didn't really say nothing crazy though. Well, Will don't have to say anything. No, Will had his moments. Yeah, he had his he had his moments in his memoir. Big moments. Jada? I can't yeah, remember. There, I there, 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 there was some Jada moment. It, it, he didn't. He didn't like delve into their relationship the way that Jada like did. She's doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's, but that's, you can literally see it play out in just clips. Just look up Will Smith clips. Just, mm-hmm. just you know, it's out there. Mm-hmm. I wonder if your boyfriend's concerned. Uh, for what? Jada Pinkett? <laughs> Just Baltimore women in general. Yeah. So think about it. We talk about Krishan, <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith. Monique. <laughs> you know what I'm Monique saying? Monique's from like, Baltimore, too? Monique is from Baltimore, up and down. But... <laughs> Monique good, though. Monique yeah. and her man, like, they good. Yeah, they good now. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. I just wonder if your boyfriend looking at you with the side eye, like... Nah, he... I don't know. He... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I can't even tell you. I know I ain't going away, but well, I don't know. Like any of them, so he's I'm going to tell you something. About, I mean, if, if you call a woman a whole Jada, that mm. should have been infuriating them this week. Mm. What yes. that means? That's what you've been trying to do yeah. it to me. Like, yo, you a Jada. You, you ain't even got Jada. Like, yo, you a whole Jada out here. <laughs> they be like, um, yeah, it's going to get, yeah. <laughs> be mad for no reason. I don't think Jada doing nothing wrong. I, I don't either. I, I don't either. I uh, It would be wrong if we didn't know anything about Will. What do we know about Will, though? You keep saying this. We don't know nothing about Will like that. We know well, about this. Rumors. Will said, only a man knows what a man needs. Man, what's that mean? You're talking nothing. about that one? That means <laughs> oh my God. only a man knows what he needs. <laughs> that don't mean because nothing. Will can't speak for other men. Maybe he was joking. He, wa- he, he was, though. You know what Maybe you he got a gay sense of humor like me. No, 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 no. That nigga was being massaged by a man but when some, he who said cares? that. Some men like to get massaged who cares? by His men. wife cared. Did you see them pan over to her when he said that? <laughs> Tell me who cared. 
You know, Jada Pinkett can. Let me ask a question. How come we, when we see a man getting a massage from another man, we look at it crazy, but we don't look at it like that when a football player is laying on the field and that trainer rubbing that football player's thigh no, it's and not stretching a, them out? No, things. it's not about that. We know you watch sports just for that. No, we're not <laughs> talking about that. It's not about that. It's about what that football player say in the act. They Only a man knows what a man needs. You don't say that, wow, your wife is sitting right there on a boat to the right of you while a, a man is caressing your shoulders. Next, some, the next person in the interview will got to ask him about that video. Because I think it's context to that video. I think he was, he was I think he was making a joke because he know people look at that and be yeah. like, damn, you letting a man massage you? I think he was just making a joke. Like, only a man knows what a man needs. Nah. <laughs> no joke. That nigga ain't laugh. And he, no, he wasn't Fresh Prince right there. He was Will Smith. He was Dang serious. Up. And and everybody was like, <laughs> right, right. And Jada was like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. By the way, that's happened to me before. I've had situations like that. I told you I was at, I was at Bishop T.D. Jake's birthday party. And this was the same week that Diddy had sat down with Carisha. Mm-hmm. And Diddy came, Diddy came, I was sitting down eating dinner and Diddy came, I stood up, gave Diddy dap and Diddy goes, the uh, sexiest man alive, mm-hmm. right? The sexiest man alive. And mm-hmm. I go, Mr. Agbad, <laughs> you acting bad tonight? Mm-hmm. And Diddy's put, you know, you do his shades, but uh-huh. I'm acting real bad. <laughs> my wife looking at us, that's all y'all can think to say to each other? <laughs> that's it. Y'all can't think to say nothing else to each other. But see, <laughs> you know it, see it's different. <laughs> that's Diddy. Like, you know what I mean? What you mean? We that's... know... We know Diddy. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> this is Diddy. This is... Mr. Party Party. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is the same nigga that asked Fabulous, yo, exactly. why you didn't come party with me? He was like, I did. He said, nah, not us. You know what? I thought that story was going to help. It ain't help shit. Not man. like, yeah. It, it, no, it, it helped my theory. Right. <laughs> Only a man knows what a man needs. And Jada Pinkett is not a man. I am so a Pinkett Smith. So she don't Smith. know what Will has needed over the years. God, I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey knows Carter. Okay. Boom. Okay. What's the, what the Winfrey got thrown in there for? Oprah. Big Oprah. Oprah. I know, but I'm saying, what what makes you a, a Winfrey? Um, I just always, I like Oprah. I like what... uh. I like what Oprah has built. You okay. know what I'm saying? And okay. I, no, more importantly, I like what Oprah has built, but I like how Oprah has empowered other people because it's, yeah. it's one thing for you to be Oprah, but man, Oprah, Oprah, you know, assisted Dr. Phil mm. and mm-hmm. Dr. Oz mm-hmm. and uh, what was the other woman named? Rachel, Rachel Roy, I think it was. Oh, mm. she did all of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gail King, like, like Oprah, like all of them. Oh, yeah. Like Oprah, Oprah used to bring them on the Oprah Winfrey show. Mm. And mm-hmm. then they all spun off and ended up, she ended up executive producing their own shows and they Got all you. had super success. Gail right. King, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, definitely. Ayanna LaVonzant. Ayanna LaVonzant oh, yeah. was supposed to be part of that yeah. Oprah camp, you know? But yeah. she decided to go off and do her own thing. But eventually came back, you know, when right. she had her show on the own network. Right. So I, I just like people like that. I like people yeah. who, I like people who serve others. So what about Perry? You don't want to be a Perry? Tyler <laughs> Perry on there? Sure. That's what's my cousin. Going, what's wrong with no, oh, no, no, I do. I fuck Tyler Perry, another one, man. People yeah. can say what they want about yeah. Tyler Perry. That motherfucker empowers people, mm-hmm. you know? And like when yeah. Nicole Avon was here last week, really my, my top four inspirations in this game is Clarence Avon, Arsenio Hall, Jay-Z, and um, Petey Green. You know, who's Arsenio, old school, Petey sure. Green's the old school radio personality from D.C. Nice. But all of them serve people. Mm-hmm. Tyler Perry serves people. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how many black people Tyler Perry employing? Yeah. How mm-hmm. many black people, like like black Absolutely. women, right? Taraji P. Henson, Tiffany Haddish, all of them will tell you, like in Hollywood, and you know this, Jess, mm-hmm. you get a quote, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like so I don't, at, at some point in your career, you have a quote. Like you star in a movie and people know this is your mm-hmm. quote. Tyler took both of them in particular, put them in stars as movies, mm-hmm. paid them a certain amount. I forgot. I don't know what the exact number was. I don't want to get yeah. behind. Whatever the exact number was, from that point on, that's how much Taraji and Tiffany yeah, wow. had to get paid. Yeah. But they would have never gotten that if Tyler didn't put them in uh, that position. Uh, yep, in those you positions, know? yeah. So it's just like, yo, Tyler's that. Tyler wanted them ones. Like, no, nah, he is. Like, it wouldn't de- He's another one. Need a book, documentary. He definitely needs mm-hmm. a book. Like, like, so you can really see his life and his mm-hmm. journey and how he came up. Because Tyler came from the bottom yeah. in the yeah. south in Louisiana, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I throw a little Perry in there. Yeah. That's All my right. cousin. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Let's pay some <laughs> bills. How long huh? your podcast be? You can leave if you want. <laughs> no, I do 20 little minutes. What's, what's going on? You did It's like an hour. 
Like an hour and a half. All right, what's the game though, real quick? <laughs> what game? <laughs> what game? I thought he said we about to play a game. No, no I'm gonna do commercial. Oh, no, you know I'm all excited. Time. I was going to say we about to play a little game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me pay. What commercial is that? Let me pay the bills, man. Let's take a break and pay some bills, man. Salute to Hero Bread. Uh, Hero makes sliced breads, buns, and tortillas that are available on Hero dot. CO and Amazon. Okay. Hero has fewer calories than the leading national brand with five to 10 grams of protein per serving. It's soft, fluffy, and delicious, but it's also high in fiber with ultra, ultra low net carbs and zero grams of sugar per slice. Right now, Hero Bread is offering our listeners 10% off their first order. Just go to hero.co and use our code idiots to save on Hero Bread today. That's H E R O dot C O to save 10% today. All right. Uh, let's do some church announcements. Um, first of all, Jess Hilarious just walked out of here. I should have made her stay in here so I could, so she could tell y'all what she got going on. But I'll tell you, uh, Jess will be in Detroit on November 7th, 8th, and 9th, okay, for a pop-up comedy event with Desi Alexander. She got six shows uh, at 7 o'clock and 9.30, November 7th, 8th, and 9th at Punch. Yeah, that's what it's called, at Punchline. At Punchline Comedy Lounge. At the Punchline Comedy Lounge in Detroit. Tickets are at justhilariousofficial.com. Um, yes, November 7th, 8th, and 9th. Six shows, 7 p.m., 9.30 p.m. Punchline Comedy Club in Detroit. I also got to tell y'all, make sure y'all go pick up my man Doug Melville's book, man. Doug Melville's book will be out November 7th. It's called Invisible Generals. It is the next release off my book imprint. Uh, Black Privilege Publishing. It tells the amazing true story of America's first Black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen. We're dropping this uh, the week of Veterans Day um, because, you know, it's telling a book about the veterans. You already know how I feel about veterans. I say it all the time, man. It pains me to see, you know, veterans walking around these streets, homeless, walking around, you know, can't even get no food after they done fought for this country, almost gave their life for this country. Some of them walking around with no limbs and, you know, they can't even get a meal. I think at the bare minimum, veterans shouldn't have to pay taxes for the rest of their lives. Veterans shouldn't, you know, uh, they, they should get they should get free housing. Veterans should get a stipend every month to where, you know, they can, you know, pay for their food and, you know, whatever else they should get. They should get free health insurance at the bare minimum. That's what we should be doing, you know, for our veterans. So Invisible Generals by Doug Melville. It'll be in stores November 7th, but you can uh, pre-order now. Um, I think that's all I got for the moment. That's all I got for the moment. Let's get back to some asking idiots. Taylor, what we got? Richie underscore X space wants to know who got the best comedy special on 2023. Trump last speech or Dr. Umar Jade Rant? Are you talking about Dr. Umar Jada rant? Mm -hmm. Dr. Umar's had better rants than the Jada rant. I like Dr. Umar rants when Dr. Umar isn't <laughs> talking about pop culture. Yeah. I don't like I don't like Dr. Umar pop culture rants. You know, the reason I don't like Dr. Umar pop culture rants is because I just feel like I, I don't want to hear Dr. Umar talking about pop culture. Like I just think that we live in an era right now where you know everybody has an unhealthy obsession with celebrity. And I guess you have to have a certain amount of celebrity and notoriety for people to listen to you. But the same way, I don't want to hear our scholars and academics, you know, well, yeah, talking about pop culture is the same way. I don't necessarily want to hear, you know, the rappers talking about social issues. Like that's the conversation we was having with Vlad, right? Vlad was like, yo, Drake and Khaled need to say something about Palestine and Israel if they want to. Yeah. Um, That's not really their thing. Like, you know, there's artists that I look to for that, like a Killer Mike, you know, like a David Banner. They don't say that about Jay-Z, though. But Jay-Z's always done that, though. That's my point. Like, Jay-Z's always spoken about social issues, whether Jay-Z did it, you know, in, in his music. They do music. it silently, though, I feel like. They'll so, give money or whatever. Sometimes I think he's been a lot more louder lately, especially, you know, establishing things like the United Justice Coalition and reform. Like, I think that he's been, over the years, he's been... Very, very vocal. Like, Jay-Z has never had a problem being front and center in regards to, like, either, like you said, cutting a check or just bringing some type of awareness to social issues. Like, Jay-Z's done concerts for Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, yeah. trying to get them elected. Jay-Z has, you know, him and Diddy gave a million dollars to Katrina. Like, like, mm -hmm. like even but Kanye. But action, though. Why do they want 
why do they want Drake and all of them to talk? Listen, I get it. <laughs> you know, with great responsibility comes great power, but that doesn't necessarily mean I need to hear everybody talking about everything. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Drake says something. Khaled says something. Well, then really what? Well, they're not knowledgeable of it. Either. But, but, but then, then what? Yeah. After, like, what? After, after it's said, then what? You know, so it's they can like, criticize him. That's all they gonna do. <laughs> they gonna they gonna, they gonna kill Drake for being well, his stance would I would right. assume would be pro Israel. They gonna kill Khaled because his stance I assume would be pro Palestine. It's like yo man, maybe them brothers is just pro peace. Yeah. Maybe those brothers is just pro. I don't want to see any innocent kids being killed. Maybe they're pro. I don't want to see innocent civilians getting killed. Like and by the way, that's I think that's what we all should be. Right. Like I just this whole you know. Pick a side mentality is so strange because I don't understand how anybody can have any objectivity and really take a step back and see what the actual truth is if you're just already on a side. Right. You know what I mean? If you're already on a side, that means you're already assuming that whatever that person says on the other side is a complete and total lie. I'm, I'm not I'm not with that. I just think I think that there's always a, a gray area. I really, really do. And I don't think we can ever get to that with people um, picking sides. How do we even get here? What the hell was we talking about? We were talking about what's the um, better comedy, Trump or Dr. Umar? <laughs> we got there from that? <laughs> yeah. And you say you didn't like how Dr. Umar. Oh, oh about... yeah, yeah, yeah. I like seeing, I want to hear Dr. Umar talking about social issues, like not, not pop culture stuff. I don't even know what Trump's last speech was. Neither. So I don't, I don't even, I, that's not even a serious question to me. Who got the best comedy special of 2023? I ain't, I, I'm, if you're talking about real comedy, was Neil yeah, Brennan sure. wasn't this year? Was Neil Brennan blocks this year? Let me see if um, Neil Brennan blocks it this year. I don't know if it was. Um, let me see. Andrew Schultz. Neil Brennan. The Infamous was this year? Infamous no, wasn't this it was, year either, it was right? last year, but he's still on tour with something. Was Neil Brennan blocks this year? Uh, no, that was last year. Yeah, I don't know. I, I got to think about what was the best comedy special I saw this year. Because I have, everybody talks about uh, uh, Ali Sadiq, I think the brother name is. No, what's the, what's the comedian name? I don't know. What's the comedian name? Everybody says his special is amazing, but I haven't gotten the chance to to watch it yet. What is his name? Let me shout the brother out. Uh, yeah, Ali Sadek. Ali Sadek. Yeah, he's got a comedy special out. I need to listen to it. I mean, I, I need to watch it, actually. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Give me another one. Make dot America dot Negro wants to know, what's the dumbest thing you ever spent money on? Dumbest thing I've ever spent money on? Close. You know, <laughs> early, early on with Breakfast Club when... You know, we would have these appearances and I'd have you have these dumbass denim leather jean type ensembles like them jeans that cost like eighteen hundred dollars in the store, you know, and I would always keep the tag on and bring them back. <laughs> and they stopped taking my clothes back because I was getting on the radio saying exactly what I just said. And so my good sister, Ty, you know, what I mean, who'd be picking out stuff for me. You know, she couldn't bring the stuff back no more. She was having a hard time because of me and my big mouth, you know, but. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about stuff like that. I don't think y'all, I, I, I think y'all know that about me just because y'all been listening to me for the past 13 years. I don't care about material things in any way, shape or form. I like to be comfortable, you know, and, you know, I like, I'm not, I don't have those vices. I don't, I don't care about the Bentleys and the Phantoms and what, you know, the Rolls Royces and the Ghosts and the, you know, the, the Slimers and the, you know, whatever other spirits y'all got out there. I don't, I don't, I don't have any of that. You know, like I don't, I'm not into jewelry like that. You see, I got my Apple watch on. I got a few pieces. I got a few watches, you know, that I throw on for special occasions. And like any jewelry I have means something to me. Like I got this little You're anchor. You're not gaudy. Nah, this anchor, this anchor that I have, you know, it just means for me to stay grounded, you know? And I got my, my Black Effect piece because that's my company. And I got a, a piece of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's weird that, and maybe just because I'm in the culture, but... I, it's weird that black people just go towards so much materialistic stuff, trying to fit in. I mean, Kanye West said it the best, though. And all falls down. Yeah, he said, so, uh, what did he say? Even if you would, uh, even if you're in a coop or something. That ain't the line you're looking for. You know what I'm talking about, though. I know That's what you're talking about, but that ain't line. the line you're looking for. It's, we, looking we, we, we hate, we love our wealth. Something, something. Yeah. That's why we hate ourselves and love our wealth, because... Shorty's asking, where the ball is that? No, it's true. Like, you know, I think a lot of that does have to do with uh, trauma. And I think a lot of that has to do with... It's like we're still trying to fit in with the white people, but they're following us. Oh, we just trying to make ourselves feel good. Like, that's, that could be the thing, too. Like, we really just trying to make ourselves feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, we um we just trying to make ourselves feel good. And I think a lot of times... um Why does it have to be that, though? Like, this, 
Like you said, eighteen hundred dollar jeans is ridiculous. it's stupid. Like all that stuff is stupid. Like I'm comfortable. Like right now, I got on a, a hoodie that Salam Remy gave me. Do you know what I'm saying? With Marvin Gaye on it that says Save the World. I got some Art Meet Chaos jeans on that my man Don Juan gave me. I got Donkey of the Day slides on that I've had, <laughs> had for, for years. years. Oh like, I'm God. good. Like, I, I, I'm i me. I show up as me everywhere I go. I'm not what I'm wearing. And I learned that a long time ago. I'm not what I'm driving. I'm not what I'm wearing. Because all that stuff can be taken away from you. Right. And all that stuff goes out of style. Like, there's a reason that cars have a year on them. You know what I mean? You might have had that that 2000 something you had ain't shit in 2023. It might have been the shit in 2000, but it ain't nothing in 2023. You know, that gear you had, that shit might have been in style three years ago. Might have been in style last year. It's not in style now. But you, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. You. If you keep evolving and growing the way you're supposed to, you'll never go out of style. Yeah. I'm I'm timeless. I'm classic. You know, like, you know, that's that's just how I feel. Like people running around talking about I am him. Yeah, I really am him. You know why I am him? Because God made me him. And the same confidence, the same insecurity, the same self-awareness, the same anxiety, the same depression, the same joy. It's all me. Yeah. And there's always been me my whole life. And no matter what's going on in my life, I just, I figured things out. Like, you know, one of my, um, one of my OGs, salute to my OG. One of my OGs yesterday hit me about another one of my OGs. When I say OGs, I'm talking about elders. Like one of my, one of my OGs who's, and I, I'm not, I don't mean OG because of what they have. I'm talking about actual age and, you know, mm -hmm. how this person carries themselves. It's a brother that I love. He's always, you know, been around. And he, we were talking about something and he told me about what one of our elders, because the person we're talking about is in his 90s. And he was saying how one of uh, one of my elders in his 90s was uh, expressing concern about me. And I was like, concern, like concern in what what way? But it wasn't like he, he used the word concern. But what he meant was he's just been asking about you a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, yo, you know, I, I can't wait to sit down with him again and, and let him know I love him. And, you know, I'm blessed, black and highly favored. And yeah. any so-called drama that comes my way is all for my greater good. And I truly feel like that. When you are living the way you're supposed to be living, when you are moving the way you're supposed to be moving, when you are actually walking righteously, any so-called bad thing that happens to you or comes your way is supposed to happen to you. But it's, it's not happening to you. It's happening for, for you. you. Mm -hmm. And I really, truly believe that. Well, how did we get here? <laughs> what was the what question? Do you mean? What's the dumbest thing that <laughs> you bought? The dumbest thing I ever spent money on? I got there from that. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. <laughs> um. Well, no, I'm not gonna do that one. So that's a good one, actually. Tarje underscore just mo. Ah. Oh. Really? You want to do that one? Okay. I don't mind it. Jessmo21 wants to know, if you can suck your own dick, is it self-love or straight up gay? What happened now? <laughs> Jessmo21 wants to know, if you can suck your own dick, is it self-love or straight up gay? I think it's self-love. The same thing as uh, It'd masturbation. It'd be like, yeah, it's the same thing as masturbation. Like, if you can suck your own dick, is it self-love or straight up gay? Is Is masturbation gay? Exactly. <laughs> are, are, are you, this is your hand now. It's your hand. You ain't, this ain't the fucking little thing that's crawling around on Adam's family. It, whatever his name was. It's your hand. I guess By the way, if you had an it, you let it jack you off. But what I'm saying huh? is, you never seen it, Adam's family? Yeah. The little hand that be walking around? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, if you had a little it walking around, you let it jack you off now. You would. Like, I think, because that should be kind of cool. You wouldn't, come on now. You're not going to sit here and tell me that, uh, what's the Adams Family daddy, man? Uncle Festin, one of them was letting that goddamn, um, <laughs> was letting it jack them off. You ain't going to tell me Lil Pugly. Uncle. Lil Pugly, Lil Pugly was letting it jack him off for something, man. <laughs> that motherfucker was not just crawling around like that for no reason. You know why people are going to think it's gay, though? Because if you suck it, you're going to definitely taste more of the pre-cum or whatever. It don't matter. I, I, I just think if you know, it's your body. It's your own body. Like you yeah, shouldn't be afraid. Weird. You shouldn't be afraid to touch your own body. It's your body. It's yeah. your body. Like you should be able to do what you want with your body. 
Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I don't think that, that no. How can you be gay with yourself? <laughs> like, that don't make no sense. Like, we got to stop that. We can't be that homophobic the way we think we gay with ourselves. How you be gay with yourself? So, once again, if you jack off, does that make you gay? No. That's, I don't think so. <laughs> what else we got? Um, I want to skip over because we kind of went over that. See, that's too heavy. See, Tarjay is asking yeah, me something say- about... Palestine and Israel. I don't want to talk about that with our show. Exactly. Because I do have some thoughts. He actually asked me, do you think black people should be worried about the things in Israel? We tie it. Oh, he's asking me, do I think black people should be worried about the things in Israel? Yeah. Yes. You should be worried. Because as the great... Just because we're not it doesn't mean... Did you see that threat? What threat? I saw somewhere where, like, I don't know which, which... Side it was, but they didn't like the U.S. trying to, you know. Well, I think. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, 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 the... Iran. Iran said that if um, if you don't stop pushing into Gaza, they're gonna, they're gonna come intervene. Over here. And then that means I don't think I don't know if they'll come over here, but they're gonna definitely intervene. But America's definitely gonna help Israel, right? And then all global well, hell going going exactly. going to take loose, going to break loose. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do think black people should be worried about the things going on in Israel simply because. You know, Israel and Gaza, like an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, period. So when you see bad things, you know, happening to people, yeah, yeah you should, you should be should concerned. Care. Like, mm-hmm. absolutely. Like, you, sh- like just you as a human should have some level of empathy. Like, when you see those, the things that's happening over in Israel and the things that's happening in Gaza, yeah, you should absolutely be concerned. Because once again, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Whenever you see innocent lives being lost, whether it's on, whether it's in Israel, whether it's in Gaza, that is injustice. Right. When innocent lives are being lost, when you are seeing kids killed, I don't care what side they're on. That's an injustice. Yeah. Period. Uh, give me another one, Taylor. The wise runner wants to know, what's been your most successful business career venture that involved the least amount of effort? What's been, there's no, I, I haven't had one of those yet. They all uh, require effort, a certain yeah. amount of effort. I mean, I guess at, at this point in my life, I guess I would say real estate, but then that wouldn't even be accurate either because it's like, you know, I buy property and land in South Carolina because I truly believe you can't say you're from someplace. Uh, you know, you can't say you represent someplace if you don't own any of it. So, you know, me and my wife, we have land, properties in South Carolina. And like there's one property I bought back in 2018 and for five years, like the building was just sitting there. And then like slowly but surely, like we ended up, the building got a, they 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 rented the building for that TV show. What's the TV show on HBO that Kenny Powers is on? Um, uh-huh. Righteous Gemstones. Righteous Gemstones rented my building. So I guess when, I don't know if the new season came out, whatever whatever season that's about to come out. I don't know if it's running now or if it's about to come out, but the new season of Righteous Gemstones, they rented one of my buildings. You Is know, it a studio? No, no, no. It's just, a, it's a building. I don't, they, I don't know what they rented it for. I guess it's for a scene or something oh. like that. Cause you know, they come through and they spray like, uh, they paint, they do a mural on the buildings. I guess that's part, I, I don't watch Righteous Gemstones, so I don't know, but that's a part of, I guess what they do on the show, like they'll come and when they rent buildings, they do a mural on the show. If people who watch Righteous Gemstones, y'all know what I'm talking about. But they 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 rented out my building. So, you know, that was easy money. You know what I mean? Because it was just a couple of days and then renting my building, check going to the account. And then just recently, um, somebody's leased that same building. And but I can't call that, you know, stress free because Having the building is is one thing, but then when somebody actually wants to lease it and then they bring their inspectors to see things that need to be done to the building, yeah. you're spending a whole so it's a, you're spending a whole other grip of money making repairs and stuff like that. Like whether it's HVAC installation or roof being fixed, all of that type of stuff, right? And so you gotta do all of that to lease the building. I mean, I guess I guess it's it's stress free because all you're doing is like paying for those repairs and stuff to be done. But, you know, I don't think it's um it's something. It's not something I would call, you know, th- the least amount of effort because there's a lot of effort that goes into, you know, doing that. But like, yeah, right now it's definitely um, real estate. But real estate, the, the real estate game is, is 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 an interesting game because you know you can buy properties and you can buy land. 
you could be sitting on that shit for years. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah. when it comes to, but I'm saying when it comes to filming, like, I'm what? thinking about all the stuff like Easter Ray, all the buildings that she put on in her show. Oh yeah, they got to rent those. About... I've had people try. To, I've had I've had uh, like American Horror Story came to us about renting my house in Jersey. Oh really? I'm not doing that. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like I'm like like but, like, but if it, if it, if that was just a property I had and not where like I actually lay my head, you know, and my family lays their head, I, I probably I would have done it. Are they able to change it though? I don't. Yeah, I guess they come in and they yeah they rearrange the whole thing. They they, they just you know. I don't know, but yeah, there, there, there's there's no, there's no successful business venture that involves, you know, least effort. Like everything involves some type of effort. While we talking about businesses, salute to my homegirl Angela too, man. You know, you see this all the time. This is called Viva Detox, prebiotic fiber, man. You know, Angela's the homie that is uh in three hundred stopping shops right now, and I always shout Angela out because she's a Asian woman who launched a very successful product. You know, that I genuinely enjoy. And she's doing her thing. So salute to Angela. You can go get Carviva Wellness at 300 stopping shops throughout the country. What else we got, Taylor? Um, Abel Casa wants to know, how do you handle mental stress or a mental health crisis in your, li- in your life? Mm, how do we handle those? It's tough, man. I thought you take a lot of naps and then try to just wake up. I mean, I've never really had, I've, I have mental stress for sure. So, you know, like, I, you know, I, I love therapy and I love meditation and I love plant-based medicine. You know, I love getting around the friends and just laughing. What's that thing that Taraji P. Henson was calling it? A joy corner or something like that? I forgot what she was calling it, but it's like literally you find these little pockets of joy and, you know, you just get with the people that you love. I think one of the biggest things that, that keeps me from like really being stressed out mentally is really being aware of my energy, meaning like, being aware of who makes my energy go up mm-hmm. and being aware of who makes my energy come down. I think that we don't do that enough. I think that if we really stay away from our phones and everything and really just tap into the universe, you can really connect with what's really going on in the world and what's really going on with people. And there's just some people that come around you who drain the fuck out of you. Like immediately, like, you know, they about to exhaust you, <laughs> you know? See, that's why Taylor's so frustrating for me because it's like... <laughs> See, I knew you were about to come over Because she don't exhaust me. <laughs> she actually makes my spirits go really, really, really up. But then I just find these little moments... You just have I, to pick on me. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just slightly, it's just slightly it's just slightly, exhausting sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But then it's just like, she makes me so happy. So I just don't... It's just weird. I just really don't know. And as far as a mental health crisis, I've only really dealt with... Uh, I've only had to personally deal with one person who was going through an actual mental health crisis. And it's the craziest thing in the world because there's really nothing you can do. Because when you call these numbers, you know, like you call 911 and you tell them to go do a wellness check, they'll tell you shit like, well, the person hasn't hurt anybody or hurt themselves yet. So we can't do anything until they do that. I'm like, what sense does that mean? <laughs> like, what the, don't we have enough examples yeah. of people who have hurt themselves or hurt somebody just by observation? Why wouldn't we intervene before they right. do it? And then, you know, uh, that person tragically took their life. So, mm. yeah, I'm, um, I'm, yeah, I don't, and I, I, how do I handle it? By going to the experts. That's how I handle it. I handle it by going to the Dr. Alfie Breland Nobles and the Dr. Rita Walkers and the Elliot Connies, you know, all of these great therapists and psychiatrists that I've been blessed to meet. My man, Dr. Jay Barnett, all these people that I call friends, you know, that I genuinely love, you know, when I'm, when I'm. If I got like mental health crisis in my life or somebody's having a mental health crisis, I know who to reach out to. And it's uh, definitely those individuals. Uh, I'm going to pay this bill, Taylor, and then we'll come back and do some more Ask Me This. Um, salute to Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. All you got to do is select two more players. All right, two or more players. Pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Prize Picks is a skill-based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they will go more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Players can choose from a vast selection of sports and stat types not offered anywhere else. They can even pick in-game projections after a game has started, which includes halves, quarters, periods, and more. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Justin Jefferson. <laughs> 
but less than 100 yards and Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown. That's who I'm selecting, okay? Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday each Tuesday. Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits to deposits into your account this football season with the prize picks reboot policy your entries stay in play even if one of your players get entry injured for nfl games and cfb top 25 matchups if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second that player is rebooted prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance go to prizepicks.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars that's prizepicks.com slash idiots and code idiots for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Let's get back to the show. Isaac, and I, maybe Andrew should be here, but Isaac Mendez Torres wants to know what does the nickname Hezzy come from? <laughs> where is what? Wait, wait, I shouldn't say where. Where does the nickname Hezzy come from? Says what? Oh, man. Um, you must be new here, huh, Isaac? <laughs> you must be new here. You can't be an OG brilliant idiots listener asking a question like that. But you added more to his name. Like, I mean, I said it's, it's all derivatives of Hezzy, but the Hezzy came from uh, one time on this podcast when Andrew Schultz was being Andrew Schultz. <laughs> and if you know anything about my guy, Andrew Schultz, Andrew Schultz thinks that he can do anything. And Andrew Schultz told Jay Williams that he would bust Jay Williams' ass in a game of basketball. Jay Williams, former number two NBA player, I mean, former number two draft pick in the NBA, came out of Duke University, got drafted by the Bulls, had a tragic uh, motorcycle accident. Career was cut short, but he's gone on to be a great, uh, you know, television analyst, sports pundit. And so Andrew and Jay Williams played a game of one-on-one. You can go look it up. It's on YouTube. Um, Jay spotted Andrew five points, and it was the first, I think it was first player to six. So he spotted Andrew five points, and he was busting Andrew ass. <laughs> he tied the game, and then he got a little cute, and he bounced the ball off Andrew's head. And I'm going to honestly tell you something. I think that's when Andrew turned heel. I think that's when Andrew became the bad guy. I think that bouncing the ball off Andrew's head flipped the switch in Andrew where he was like, fuck y'all niggas <laughs> forever. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I think I'm dead serious. And I mean, when I say the N-word, I mean, I, I really think he, that that <laughs> that turned something on him that made him say, fuck everybody. Like, really? Like, for real, for real. I saw, if you go back and watch that video, you can see the ball bounce off his head and you see like a switch turn on in Andrew. And then Jay Williams shot and he missed. And Andrew got the rebound. And Andrew stepped back, drove to the lane, and he hit him with the hezzy. Look. <gasps> Jay bit for it. And as Jay was coming down, Andrew was going up. Ball goes up, bounces around the rim, falls, drops. Andrew wins the game. <laughs> Six to five after being spotted five points. Wow. And the Hezzy was born. You're new here, aren't you, Isaac? <laughs> you should know that story. What else we got, Taylor? Um, the wise runner wants to know, what Earth movie do you think aliens are most offended by? <laughs> <laughs> what earth movie do you think aliens are most offended by all of them because the, the fucking humans win we ain't beating no motherfucking aliens bro but it, I, maybe i'm wrong correct me if i'm wrong most of the alien movies i see earthlings always win i'm telling you right now when it happens and we should hope we should pray that the aliens aren't hostile we ain't got nothing for them and the reason we know we don't got nothing for them is because they got here and if they got here that means they've always been here so unless that uh unless we as an earthling society, have a bunch of technology that, uh, you know, we don't know about. And they have been traveling the solar system and traveling all these galaxies and visiting different planets. They have technology that we don't have. So that lets me know they can fuck us up. So, yeah, I think but that... We, I, we, we know that there's other planets, though. So what... Do we? What we do thought mean? we knew in our solar <laughs> system. Mean? In our solar system, we thought we knew that there was nine. But then Pluto. I know. Then they decided Pluto Pluto's wasn't a planet no more. more. I, don't I, don't like that. I don't think they know. I don't think they know ninety percent of what we think that they know. And I don't know why I'm always using ninety percent as a as a as a as a <laughs> whatever the fuck the percentage. <laughs> but I just feel like I don't think they know as much as they tell us that they do. 
I really don't. I think that they're discovering new things all the time. And I think as yeah. they get more technology here on Earth, we're going to start to see more. So I think aliens are offended by all Earth movies simply because Earthlings always win. And if they get access to some of these movies, I know they're looking at this shit like we would fuck them up. <laughs> that shit would never happen. Yeah, you think some men in black can beat us? You think these niggas walking around in black suits? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Salute to Will. I love Will. But I'm just saying, I know aliens got to be sitting back chuckling. Like, come on now. I love Will. Though. I really do love Will Smith. I think y'all, y'all, I love him. Y'all doing, y'all doing the Smiths way dirty. I want to know what they look like for real. Do you, you think? Do you think that the images that they show is something relatable I think something. to it? I do, because some of them should look like the Greys. They do. I'm not gonna lie. Like if you know, if you know, if you know about the Greys, if you know what I'm talking about, you've seen the Grey aliens. Like, yeah, some of that stuff they show us on TV do. And as a person who's seen a flying saucer, because I've actually seen a flying saucer before, Mount's Corner, South Carolina, third grade, eight years old, sitting in my grandma's yard, playing, pretending to be He Man, a Shearer, knowing me. And um, <laughs> there was a, a a a black disc, literally hovering over the trees, and I wasn't even scared. I just looked up and I was like. What is that? And I'm, I, I, in my mind, I'm, I, I don't even think I thought, what is that? I was just looking at it. It was just like a black disc hovering over the trees. You know, you in third grade, eight years old, I wasn't thinking anything. If, if, if you don't know what something is, you're not afraid of it or thinking anything of it. You know what I mean? You're just observing. So I was just observing it. And then it just shot off. And then as I got older and started reading about UFOs and, you know. How big was it? Oh. <laughs> Whatever. How big was it? I'm, we're talking about the sauce, the whatever it's called. You tell somebody you're playing Shira. Now they all of a sudden want to ask you how big it is. Um, it was small? or I mean, I was eight. So it's like it was hovering over trees. It was like, it was large enough for me to see. It was large enough for me to see and notice. Like, And when I'm looking back on it, I'm like, it was bigger than what a drone is considered now. Like, think about yeah. the biggest drone you saw. It was definitely a lot bigger than that, but it also looked very slim. You know what I mean? It didn't look like a wide. You know when you see a plane, like a plane looks like wide and like yeah. bulky. It didn't look like that at all. But it was just hovering over the trees, and it looked like it was spinning as it was hovering. I I, I remember that vividly, and it wasn't nighttime either. It was in broad daylight. You saw that they saw they spied Bigfoot again too. Oh, I definitely saw that, and I've always <laughs> thought that Bigfoot had some type of camouflage capabilities. That's why people don't see him. Um, give me some more. I wonder why they call him Bigfoot, though. Ooh, oh, I got to answer this one. This is a great one. Which one? Tone Gaines. Okay, Tone Gaines wants to know who's the kindest spirit you ever met. I already know that one for me. Who? Tell me who. Mama. Miss Anita. Mama's one of them. No, no, Mama's <laughs> one of them. Mama's one of them. Mama, 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 Miss Anita. Yeah, Miss Anita <laughs> used to work here at, uh, at iHeart. I think, yeah, speaking of Will Smith, y'all saw her in the videos yeah. with Will Smith, you know? And, um... Sweet. Yeah, because Will, I guess Will met her years ago. Did Will meet her years ago and remembered her? What was it? Not that I remember. What? What? what why was? Why did that moment go so viral? It was. Um, something. I mean, I just we just showed her who he. Uh, we showed him who she is, and you no. Know, yeah, that moment being, went crazy viral for some reason. I feel like Mama met him back in the day. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And she remember. He maybe remembered so. her spirit. Yeah. But no, she's definitely one of them. She was definitely Miss Anita's. Definitely one of the most kindest spirits I've ever met. Um, there's a guy. Name uh Shane Gandy. If y'all remember that show on MTV from back in the day called Buck Wild. And it was all of these kids from West Virginia, all of these crazy white kids from West Virginia. And um Shane was the star of that show. And Shane tragically passed away. Uh, cause he was he was mudding. Him and two of his peoples was mudding and they got stuck in the mud, and I guess the muck the muffler got stuck in the mud. And they all died of carbon monoxide poisoning, which is crazy because, you know, earlier that year, me and Duval was down in West Virginia because we shot an episode of Buck Wild with them. And uh, we were all stuck in the mud. There was a there like we all we all went mud. Me, Shane, Joey, salute to my man Joey. I ain't talked to Joey in a minute, but it was me, Shane, Joey and Duval. And we got stuck in the mud. And we sat there for a while, but then we ended up getting out. You know what I mean? So I guess maybe the muffler wasn't stuck in the mud or whatever. But Shane was absolutely one of the most kindest, purest spirits I ever met in my life. Like he didn't have no, he didn't have no cell phone. He used to call them smart boxes. I don't want no smart box. <laughs> Keep those smart boxes from around me. And like he didn't want no cell phone. And he literally could like walk around New York City and observe New York City and know where to go. Like he, he would pay attention to details like that. He'd be like, 
You know, it's arrow, it's an arrow on, you know, the FedEx thing is an arrow around the FedEx. You know, that's an arrow. Like, he would just know, like, just little stuff like that. Like, he was a very, very, very uh, pure, kind person. I remember we, um, <laughs> we was, uh, it was, it was freezing and I had on, like, the full, and I'm sure I told this story before, but I had on the full camouflage outfit in Virginia with the rubber boots, straight Duck Dynasty with it. <laughs> had the ski mask on and I was about to get out the truck and, Shane goes, no, Charlemagne, no, oh, that's no, him. you're oh. a nigger in West Virginia. They'll kill you dead. I was, I wasn't even offended because he was explaining to me the severity of the situation and letting me know how they would perceive me. If he would have said that, why any, he, why didn't you just say you're a black person? It wouldn't hit the same. I would, <laughs> I would, I would have tested that there. I promise right. you, I would have tested that there. If he would have said, yo, you're a black person in West Virginia, they'll kill you dead. I'm like, man, fuck that. Cause like we, it was, you know, back then we didn't call them shysties, but it was just like I, I'm black. I can wear my ski mask in the goddamn store if I want to. Like, but the when the way he said it, it hit. And by the way, I, I was around him enough to know that he don't talk like that. It's not like he uses that language. In fact, oh. one of his friends, I never forget this too. One of his friends, we're in West Virginia, and Duval can if Duval remembers, because you know that nigga don't remember nothing. <laughs> we were in a room, like a trailer. I forgot I forgot whose house we was at, but we was at one of, uh, it was either Shane or Joey's house. And one of Shane's friends was over there. And either me or Duvall was using the N-word. Shane's friend was white. He goes, man, man, my good friend, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, my good friend, such and such, man, he wouldn't approve of you using that word, man, because his friend was black. Yeah. He's like, I don't like y'all using that word, man. It makes me uncomfortable, man. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I, 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 you know, just because I just know my friend wouldn't like it. And that shit was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> there's a white dude from West Virginia <laughs> telling us we shouldn't use the N-word. Yeah. I was like, wow, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, he, they were, they were, yeah, he was a, uh, he was one of the kindest spirits I've, uh, I've definitely ever met. Um, and my wife, of course, another kind of spirit. But what else we got? Um, Tyler on demand thirteen wants to know what's your most spiritual experience. You said that too, though, wasn't it? When you went to you went to Aruba, I'd be having mad Aruba, spiritual okay. spiritual experiences because God don't play about me. God be showing me stuff, man. I you went underwater or something. Like yeah, that. I can breathe underwater. I don't know if that's spiritual <laughs> or just me being special. Um. I, what's my most spiritual experience? Oh, my most spiritual experience ever when I got into a car accident. Uh, I wrote about this in my first book. You got book. into a car accident? Yeah, I was driving. I, I, my, my mom used to have this white Lumina caravan and I used to drive it all the time. And I, I, I don't even remember what year it was, man. This had to be, it was definitely the, uh, man, what year was this? I wasn't doing radio yet. Method Man and Red Man Blackout album was out. I know that because I was playing it. But long story short, I was drunk as shit and I was leaving Monk's Corner, almost got into a wreck on the way to Monk's Corner. I was so drunk. I mean, on the way leaving Monk's Corner, I was so drunk because, you know, you'd be driving on them two lane highways. So I ended up getting my mirror knocked off because I was drunk as shit. And uh, the girl I was with decided to drive. She was like, no, you gonna let me drive. You almost killed her. So she drove. She drove us to her house. On the way there, I had got enough sleep that I was able to drive to my homeboy's house in North Charleston, but he wasn't home. And so I was like, fuck, I'm just going to thug it out, drive back to Monk's Corner. Kids do not drive drunk. I was stupid as shit. So I drove back to Monk's Corner, made it to my mom's house in my bed. I don't know how long. And then my guy, God bless the dead, psh, crazy. I'm about to say God bless the dead twice because my guy's father, my guy who's no longer with us, um, rest in peace, international, his his father, who's no longer with us, rest in peace, he he called me to tell me that the block was jumping. So I grabbed my little pack, got back in the van, drove off my dirt road, went down Gilead Road in Moss Corner. Anybody in Moss Corner know what I'm talking about? You driving down Gilead Road, past Whitesville Elementary School, lost control of the van. I went up this embankment because it was like the, like the, on the left side, it's like a embankment. So I, Forged off the side of the road. Meth man and red man can't bark with the big dogs blaring. Hit the embankment. 
flew up in the motherfucking air. The van, literally, like, let's say this is the tree, right? This is the tree. I'm holding up the Carviva Wellness bottle. The van, the undercarriage hit the tree. So the van literally wrapped around the tree. The luminic air wrapped around the tree. I didn't have a seatbelt on. So I flew out the back of the van. Flew out the back of the van. Music still playing. I go to knock on somebody's door. I see the person come run into the door because they heard it. And they look, they go, oh my God, somebody's dead. That's, the, that's all I heard the person say, oh my God, somebody's dead. I'm like, oh my God, somebody's dead. Dude didn't act like he didn't even see me. Like I'm right there at the door. I was knocking on their door. So they come running out the house. I hear them saying, is the body in there? Like literally like that. I'm like, yo, what the f- I'm right here. I'm like, yo. Nobody paying me no attention. So I just sit down in this ditch. It was a ditch, like, right there. I'm sitting down in the ditch. It, I don't know how long I was sitting there, but it just seemed like fast. Police came. Then my dad came. None of these people act like they could see me. You think that I'm literally, I'm body. literally sitting there like, yo, I'm right here. My dad is, like, yelling, screaming. My mom pulls up. My mom, the only person who noticed me sitting Sitting over in the sitting over in the ditch, what straight the hell? up. I'm telling you, she's the only person who knows me sitting over in the ditch. And the police said the police did not take me to jail. They said the they said they never saw somebody survive a car accident like that. When you said you fell in the the window was already open. No, I flew out the back. I flew out literally the I flew the in the whole window? back of the van. Like I'm driving the van. I got no seatbelt on. Okay. When I hit. And wrecked, I flew all the way to the back of the van and ended okay. up climbing out the back oh, window of the okay. van. Was, okay. The police said the only reason I lived is because I was so fucking drunk mm. yeah, and that I was numb. Yeah. And it, because I didn't have a seatbelt on. They said if I would have had a seatbelt on, I would have ended up crushed and died in the van. My, I remember my ex went through, he had a car accident and he, he doesn't like to wear a seatbelt because if he did wear a seatbelt in that car accident, he would have died too, though. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I still wear my I still wear my seatbelt to this day. But the reason I, I too, but I, was, the reason I said that was my, my most spiritual experience because you know if you're supposed to be gone, you're going to be gone. Yeah. Right. But it just it felt like God had a bigger purpose, you know. Yeah. For me and my existence, and um, I hope I'm fulfilling it. Let's take a break and salute to Elevate You, okay? Uh, I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. Y'all know that. I'm just here to tell you about something that's been keeping me feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately. It's called Elevate You, Vitality Daily Greens, co-founded by Unk, the good brother Steve Harvey, and formulated by Harvard scientists, okay? This game-changing formula boosts your body's mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day. Now, I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like There just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's got a lot of key benefits, man. It's gluten-free. It's vegan. 15 calories per serving. Costs you only $1.50 per day. 30 superfoods per serving. Nine greens per serving. Clinically studied probiotics. Contains fruit, vegetables, mushroom blend. Enzymes to aid digestion. Zero grams added sugar. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee if you are not 100% satisfied, okay? They'll refund your full purchase price, all right? This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price Salute to the good folks that elevate you. I don't know who these people are, but you might know. King underscore D71 <laughs> wants to know, who do you think should play Professor X and Magneto in the MC? Magneto, ma'am. Magneto, sorry. Um, the same people who play him now, or well, played him in the Fox universe. I think Patrick Stewart is a great Professor X, and I think the dude who was in those other X-Men movies was a great Professor X. I think those are great characters. I mean, they might want to add somebody else for the MCU, but I mean, you know, if you're talking about the variants and people from alternate realities and universes, I think they're great and you're probably going to see them, uh, I'm sure, in Deadpool. So, I mean, I like, I like, I like who they got playing them now. 
Um, I mean, this one I feel like is obvious, but but Jacob Unlimited wants to know how should someone who doesn't have the money to afford therapy approach mental read. You should reach out to organizations like Black Men Hill. You should reach out to organizations like the Mental Wealth Alliance. That's my nonprofit. You know, one thing that the Mental Wealth Alliance wants to do, one thing that we're doing is we're trying to provide, you know, uh, 10,000 black people with free therapy, you know, over the next five years. That's why we raise, you know, with the donations that we get. See, when I get these donations for the Mental Wealth Alliance, I give them to organizations like Black Men Hill because that's what Black Men Hill does. Black Men Hill provides free therapy, you know, for, for people. Or you can go to like uh, Dr. Alfie Breland Noble. She has the Acoma Project. You can go on the Acoma Project.com. You know, they have various ways that people can receive um, free therapy. I cannot remember the exact uh, thing that they do in order to provide people with free therapy, but she does have, um, she does have something where she provides people free therapy. But there's a lot of different organizations that are doing it. Like Black Men Hill, like I said, um, definitely check out the Acoma Project. And, you know, the Mental Wealth Alliance, we can always point you in the right direction. So just go on the website, mentalwealthalliance.org uh, and, and and check it out. Like, I mean, that's literally why I even have my Mental Wealth Expo, which is also a free event. Because like I always tell y'all, if you're providing a service for people and it's a genuine service that you really want the community to benefit from, I don't think you should ever charge anybody for that service. And if I ever couldn't do the Mental Wealth Expo for free, I just wouldn't do it. If I couldn't do it free of charge to people, I just wouldn't do it. So, um. Yeah, go to mentalwealthalliance.org and you can tap into some resources that can help you get some affordable therapy. Because he didn't say, I'm, I'm saying free, but he just says affordable therapy. So there's always somebody out there for you. How about also just reading like Michael Gladwell book? Um, I think reading books is good, but here's the scary part about reading any book. Like you can read a book about mental health, but you still should sit down with an expert. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you don't know, it might be things in that book that, you know, only an expert can walk you through. Yeah. So you don't want to be, you know, listening to a book or reading a book and then, like you, put it like this, if, if you read a book about heart surgery, you wouldn't do heart surgery on yourself. Yeah. Unless you're Andrew. Yeah, Andrew might try that. You know <laughs> what I mean? But you you wouldn't try to, you know, physically fix things on you. So it's the same thing with your mental. Like, you know, let the experts do that. The books can lead you in the right direction, but let the experts handle that. All right, let's do two more, man. Well, Marky underscore Mark underscore 27 wants to know, Charlotte, how do I stop myself from turning into a werewolf? Be around non-believers. <laughs> Marky Mark 27, be around non-believers. This is how I know you're an OG brand idiot <laughs> fan. This is how I know you've read, you know, Black Privilege. Um, my transition into a werewolf would have been complete <laughs> yeah. in third grade if I hadn't been around a bunch of non-believers because I saw Teen Wolf. And after I saw Teen Wolf, I just knew I too was a werewolf. And I knew that, you know, having those skills of a werewolf would make me the greatest basketball player on the planet because that's what Michael J. Fox was. <laughs> Michael J. Fox could really play ball. Now, we don't know if Michael J. Fox could have competed with people in college or competed with people in the pros because he never got the opportunity to do that because he was just a high school basketball player. Um, but from what we saw on that basketball court when he was a werewolf, he was unbelievable. And so I wanted to be a werewolf for the basketball skills. Literally, that's what I wanted to be a werewolf for. But I just knew I was one. I knew I was one. And so when I started to see, like, I remember when the process was happening, it was a full moon. And like, I'm in third grade. I'm not even going through puberty yet. So where did hair come from? All of a sudden, hair just start popping up on my arms. Like, oh, shit. You sure this wasn't a dream? I was, I, I was there. It was real. <laughs> hair popping up on my arms. Every now and then I would be, I, I'd be just like randomly talking like, yo, Taylor, so you know, they're, you know what I mean? Just randomly, right? Like, you Taylor, you know, yo, Taylor, so listen, we're going, like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Right? And so the next day I'm at school and I'm just not, I'm, I'm feeling weird the whole day. Like, you know how he was sweating and shit? Like, I wasn't really doing that, but I was pretending I was doing that. So I'm sweating, right? And I'm like, oh shit, I'm sweating crazy. You know what I'm saying? Skin getting clammy. I see the hair growing. And I'm sitting, I start telling everybody, I want everybody to be prepared. So I'm telling everybody like, yo, I'm going to turn into a werewolf, yo. I feel it. Lunchtime, I'm going to turn into a werewolf. I'm, I'm telling everybody, teachers, students, nobody taking me serious. I'm just, I'm just, I'm the disruptor. Oh, he's disrupting class again. No, I'm going to turn into a werewolf. <laughs> I'm sitting at the lunch table. I'm eating, right? I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating. I can feel it, I can feel it, I can feel it. All of a sudden, I just feel something weird happening on like my skull. All the kids jump up and run like, oh, they all ran, ran to get the teachers because my ears 
used to be round. In that moment, they all they started to get pointy. <laughs> and the kids saw that. But when the kids started yelling and screaming, it startled the transition. So it was kind of like Avengers Endgame when Hulk didn't want to come out. Mm-hmm. It was like that. The wolf was coming. <laughs> well, I think the wolf got Are startled by the kids. Too? I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I got. T- I don't know. I don't remember all of that. But I remember <laughs> the hair and my ears getting pointy. And so it's like, yeah, the best way to you know stop yourself from turning into a werewolf is just be around people who don't necessarily believe. You know, what I do believe. Or what they would have you- just sat there and oh shit! Like you know, if they they hadn't startled me, it would have happened. <laughs> You know what Maybe you made me do believe? Huh? I remember one time, this is a couple of years ago, you came into the breakfast club and you said that someone like put those marks on your knees. Yes. They, you still have them? No, they're gone. I That's get, I, crazy. I, I get those all the time. I'm all, listen, I know <laughs> I've been abducted and probed millions of times. From time to time, they come collect me. Check me out, make sure everything good, and send me back. I and I, sh- I showed Dick Gregory these. I had two cuts yeah, that was weird, on though. my shins in the exact same place. No, because it was like I think summertime, and the day before you didn't have that. that I know weird. that. that my wife weird. said the same thing. Like my my, my wife will see me now with certain marks on me, and she'd be like, "Oh, they came again." You know what I mean? Pause. That's not <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Give me one more. Let me get the fuck um, out of here. Um, Ricky Tiki, wait, Ricky Tiki Tavi thirteen. I don't think I said it right. What's the one hip hop artist or group that you think didn't live up to their full potential? One hip hop artist or group. That's a good question. I mean, here's the thing about living up to your full potential, man. Um, sometimes just things are what they are. Meaning that who are we to say somebody didn't live up to their full potential? Like, success is subjective. Like, success isn't always equated to Jay-Z. Success isn't always equated to LeBron James. And I know these guys are top of their class, but then we always forget about all the other people who play in the NBA. Those people are successful. Yeah, They make millions of dollars doing what they love to do. You know what I mean? Like, even if you don't win a championship or you never made an all-star game or you don't average, you know, 10 points a game. If you played 10, 12, 13 years in the league and you made tens of millions of dollars, if you were good enough to constantly be on a roster, you're a fucking success. <laughs> like, like you're a success. Because especially if you're in something like the NBA, because think about the degree of difficulty it takes to get into the league. So the bar isn't LeBron James all the time. And it's the same thing in like rap or hip hop. Everybody ain't going to be Jay-Z. Everybody ain't going to be Run DMC. Everybody not going to be, you know, Migos or whoever. Everybody not going to have tens of 10 platinum plaques. But what if you just an artist who, what if you Tech Nine? Tech Nine is a great example. Yeah, I was going to say The Locks. The Locks is is another great example. Like, like, those, but those are great people. Like, those are phenomenal careers. They've made hella money and they get critical acclaim. They can still do shows. That's success. Like, it's hard to say, you know, who who didn't live up to their full potential. It's like, I think everyone has a moment, though. That's why I said the lots, where I feel like people really saw the potential of the lots with the verses. But I think, the, I think that we didn't see the potential of the locks. We saw the career of the locks. Oh, that's just true. You know what I mean? Like, that was, the, that, was the, that was them showcasing their catalog. Like, that's a... When, by the time you make it to something like verses... You already established. You got to be established enough to have a versus, and they're 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 a perfect example of yeah. They'll bust your motherfucking ass. They may not have sold tens of millions of records and you know got all the awards and all of that shit like that. Even though they do got uh, some Grammys, they'll bust your ass. You know, so it's just like when people say you didn't reach your full potential. I got to have specific examples because not reaching your full potential to me is somebody who got strung out on drugs, you know, because those are about life choices, right? Yeah. Like you made the choice to get strung out on drugs or you, you know, decided to go rob a store, committed a crime, ended up in prison, like stuff like that. Those are people who, like, damn, that person didn't reach their full potential because they made a poor choice. If, you know, you still in this game and still in this business and you've had a long career and you're able to eat off 
what you built, yeah. you're a success to me. No, I only start. I only start. Um, Tiffany, well, her last name. I love, I love New, New York. York. I feel like she should have been more. She who? She's New York. Yeah, but she don't get st- like all these other influencers now. Like they following her. She's really. just early though. But that's, yeah, that's, but she's just early. That's all. But, Somebody like New York was just early. Like Flavor Flav. Yeah, is another example. But guess what? But he was a hip hop artist before, you know. But when you see Flav in people. Vegas, they these people love Flavor Flav. Yeah. Flavor Flav yeah. ain't missing a meal. Flavor Flav is still making money being Flavor Flav. Just like New York is still making money being New York. New York can still get booked being New York. Yeah. So that's what I mean. It's just like nowadays in reality television, we compare it to Kim Kardashian, probably, right? Or, or like, I don't know, yes. Bethany Frankel, maybe. Like these people, like, d- 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 fuck it, the Kardashians. The Kardashians are the bar in reality TV. But you've mm-hmm. only seen that once. Yeah. Like everybody is not the Kardashians. You know what I'm saying? So to me, New York is a success. New York is a super success because. I feel like I would see her more. That's what I'm saying. Maybe she choose, but that's the other thing. Maybe she's choosing not to be. Maybe maybe people like that got a taste of the limelight, the spotlight, and they don't want to be in it no more. Like I, I don't. I mean, I don't know if that's her, that's the case for her. Yeah. But everything isn't about you know being the most popping person or wanting to be seen. Some people got a taste of it, made some money off it, decided to fall back. That's Kendrick. Andre three thousand. Andre, I know Andre three thousand for Chappelle sure. David did it once. <laughs> Lauren Hill did it once. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. I, I respect that. Like, to me, that's the ultimate. And, you know, as somebody who's had the, you know, pleasure of kicking it with Andre and, you know, sitting down, building with Andre and chopping it up, he ain't missing it at all. Yeah. And I respect <laughs> that. Like, yo, do you know what kind of self-awareness you have to have and what type of person you have to be to be like, I don't want that. I did. I was the most famous person in the world at one point. I made so much money that I don't got to do nothing but walk around and play my flute all goddamn day. You know what I mean? Play my cello or whatever it is. All goddamn, I can travel the world. All, that's all Andre has been doing. He's been living life. That should be the dream. The dream should be figure out what it is you love to do. Do it. Make some money off it. And then just live. Yeah. I say that all the time. I say, yo, man, don't think for one second I wouldn't go live in Anguilla and 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 take my family over there. And just live and, 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 and wouldn't put no pressure on them to do anything. I wouldn't put any pressure on my daughters to do anything. Now, I know that's not the reality of the situation because they got their own, they're going to have their own hopes and dreams. Like I had my own hopes and dreams. So you got to let them go live life. But man, <laughs> I have no problem just going to live. I want to travel the world, do plant based medicines, and just figure out the meaning of. Life, if there if if there is even a, a meaning to figure out, but I just want to go live. That's that's literally what I want to do. I just want to go experience this third rock from the sun. Cause shit, I'm 45. I only got about 50 more summers left. I'm gonna clock out around 95. 95, 100. I'm gonna clock out. 100, I actually, I'm actually gonna die at 101. This I, I think know. I'm a, yeah, I think I'm gonna die at like 100. I'm gonna be 101. Live, I have a longevity of. of um, Elders, they, uh, the oldest one, one hundred and four. Really? So your mom on my mom's around? side. Can you relax? Yeah, n- stop. <laughs> what? On my mom's side, they have very longevity, though. I'm happy your mama gonna be. Like, <laughs> You're not. If I'm gonna live to be one hundred and one, is she gonna be how old she is now? She's married. I know, but how old is she? I don't know. I'm just thinking about the pie. I'm just thinking about how much, how many more years of pie we gonna be receiving. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 right. mm, I'm trying mm, to get mm, my mom to do a bakery. I got her. I'm trying to tell her. She doesn't, she's scared though. She don't want to hate what she loves. She thinks she's going to start. Not oh, because like it become a business then. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Uh, Schultz will be back next week. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.